Ave Maria, this is Friar Roderick here in Cologne, Germany at the Church of the Immaculate Conception with Blessed John Duns Scotus' tomb behind me here where he's laid for 700 years. This is a church run by the Franciscans here in Cologne um, of the uh, Conventuals and uh, this church was named after the Immaculate Conception which John Duns Scotus was so important and instrumental in bringing about as a dogma, because at the time, he was the only one who supported the Immaculate Conception, whereas almost all of the predecessors and the great uh, minds like, like um, St. Thomas Aquinas and even um, the Franciscan ones like Bonaventure were arguing against the, uh, the Immaculate Conception as being a dogma, and even uh, that it was not correct that it was actually a heresy. So to have one person be able to come up and defend the American conception against such very prominent and very uh, uh, well-respected theologians is really unprecedented because the fact that this dogma was proclaimed at such a high level of church when such great amount of theology behind, before that was um, was the exact opposite. It's, it's unprecedented in the church. This is the only time it's ever happened. And so we have a very um, unique person here, a uh, very unique uh, memorial to Blessed John John Scotus. He's been here since 1308, and he died in, at a very young age of 42. So if he had lived longer, he would have um, done a lot more because he had a whole way of thinking, a Franciscan way of thinking that, that put into books and thought what St. Francis sort of had in his heart. So he kind of intellectualized a lot of what St. Francis was all about and gave that theological roots to the whole Franciscan Marian focus that um, St. Maximilian Kolbe picked up on so many years later. And was proclaimed a dogma so many years later, like um, about 600 years later, or, seven, or uh, 500 years later. In, in 1854, the dogma was proclaimed by Pius IX. So th this whole thought is very Marian, as he's called the Marian doctor. He's also the subtle doctor, and he provided a lot of the personal theology that is so popular today yet did it in a very orthodox and very uh, intellectually sound way that gave the, you know, not only a, um, um, the relative idea of, of where we're at in society and where we are in the world as, as Catholics and Christians and the whole faith and the whole um, intellectual thought process, but also um, did that in a, in a very rigorous and, um, um, you know, truthful and concrete way. So it wasn't, it wasn't any kind of um, mere relativism. It was a uh, way of being very personal and very truthful and very um, concrete. So here we are, and um, hope you learn more about um, John Dunscoe because he has a lot to offer. Uh, there seems to be a lot more um, openness to John Dunscoe because it's kind of um, an anti- uh, Scotus um, since probably about the late 1800s when um, Pope Leo XIII um, had his encyclical that put St. Thomas Aquinas as the pinnacle of, of thought in the church. But St. Uh, blessed John Dunscoe is only blessed. He's declared blessed in, in uh, uh, 1991, um, uh, I believe, but very recently. And so we have um, a, a kind of return to to that thought, and, and it gives that subtlety that we need today in a time of great confusion, but a time that recognizes um, the great importance of personhood and the, and the individual, and places that in the context of the wider church and um, the whole idea also of, of his um, the, the Marian element is very much associated with Christ. And that was um, 
in his way of defending the Immaculate Conception, which is considered the uh, most extreme, say, uh, um, dogma of the Catholic Church in regard to Mary, it's all focused on Christ, the primacy of Christ. Not just the primacy of Christ, but the absolute primacy of Christ. All the previous theologians believed in the primacy of Christ as far as being the most important part of history and the most important part of creation. But John Duns Scotus put that in an absolute sense. He maximized the Christology to bring about the maximum in Mariology. And this is an idea that's becoming more popular today, even amongst many Thomists. So it's interesting to see how this will all pan out and um, what the future will bring as far as uh, getting ourselves out of a very big crisis in the church that's been ongoing for 50 years, but probably coming to a head more so today than ever before. So here we are at uh, a great historical um, place for the church in the past, but pointing toward the future, which is placing Mary at the center of our thinking and our piety and our thoughts and placing her centrally in Christ. God bless you. Adoram.